my sons, my actuals. Football was last night rocked by sensational revelations from a well-known journalist who made claims of match-fixing, corruption in the game, paedophilia at some of the world's biggest clubs, high-profile players who've committed serious crimes, that players are involved in sex trafficking, drug smuggling, and a whole bunch more. In this video, we'll take a look at some of those claims made by a man who may well need some extra security for his own safety. This is Romain Molina. He is an investigative journalist who is based in Andalusia. He's written six books about the beautiful game, including one of that very name. He's done some work for the New York Times, the BBC, CNN, and other notable publications, and is someone to be trusted. In fact, he was one of the authors of The Guardian's investigation, which revealed the sexual assaults and rapes of young players by the president of the Haitian Football Federation. Yves Jean Bart, the president of the Haitian FA, was once really adored by FIFA. In fact, Jenny Infantano has written some unbelievable letters of praise about this guy, but an investigation has led him to being handed a lifetime ban over allegations about sexual abuse of young female players. And Molina was one of three writers for this Guardian special report, which exposed the truth about Haitia's king of football. The beautiful thing about social media and this information age that we live in is that with everyone having a platform, there are some real truth seekers out there amongst us and Romain clearly is one of those. And when he speaks, people do listen. You can see from the names that were uh, active in the space last night that he is well respected. There are footballers, journalists, football clubs. That is The Rock. This guy here is Yannick Nianga, who's a sporting director of a French rugby club. Oh, that is uh, Ibrahima Konate, Liverpool player. Dimitri Payet, actual Marseille, uh, Jeremy Doku, whole bunch of people that we recognise. Let's fire through a bunch of these claims that Molina made during this unbelievable Twitter spaces. Amongst the outlandish things that Romain has alleged in this Twitter spaces, which will go down in history as one of the finest moments in football Twitter, is that Ferland Mendy hit a woman, knocked her to the ground, kicked her in the head before showing her his genitals. Molina says that in 2018, while Mendy was playing for Leon, he attacked a woman, punching her and kicking her in the head, inflicting bruises on her head and also exposing his genitalia in her face while she was bleeding on the floor. As a result of the attack, the same woman was hospitalised, suffered physical and mental scars, but the case was silenced by Leon at the time so that they could sell him to Real Madrid. Molina goes on to say that since that incident, Ferland Mendy's family have severed all ties with him. His parents have split up since the incident, and this incident has made Molina want to stop exploring the world of football because it seems so lost. He went on to say that Mendy's been suffering from an alcohol addiction for years and was caught driving while intoxicated and the club swept it under the table. Another case that apparently took place, according to Molina, concerns striker Eli Wahi. I think some people call him Elijah Wahi. He's a Montpellier striker. And it is claimed by Molina that while he was playing in Cannes Youth Academy, he sexually assaulted boys younger than him, used to lock them in the bathroom with him and force them to masturbate. When some of them complained, Cannes released Wahi immediately but refrained from contacting the police for fear of damaging the club's image. Of course, it wouldn't be a real football Twitter story without an Arsenal link. And Arsenal were mentioned in Molina's spaces where he said that there's an Arsenal player that had his birthday and the theme of his birthday were on helium balloons. And Arsenal players used to inhale a lot of helium balloons in the dressing room. I should stress that it does say used to. I think a lot of those players have been moved on. It's about three years ago since this video was leaked of Sayed Kalasinac, Grinduzi, Lacazette, Aubameyang, uh, Mustafi, Mesut Ozil, all doing nitrous oxide and smoking and whatever in a club. And I'm guessing 
that Matteo Guendouzi being at Marseille and the fact that Dimitri Payet and Marseille as a club were actually in the spaces meant that they were super keen to hear if anything was said about them. On the case of Benjamin Mendy, Molina has said that he's in prison because he did not respect his parole, left for Dubai with some friends and returned by private jet. He's claimed that some international games in Asia are fixed and a lot of players have stopped joining their national teams because of this. He's also said that leagues in most Southeast Asian, Eastern European and Latin American countries are fixed. Ireland, Malta and Gibraltar also have lots of match fixing. He's also claimed that most French players smoke shisha and do these nitrous oxide balloons. Blaise Matuidi pretty much hooked on shisha and of course he was fine doing lots of running but on the other hand Molina claims you see Pavard running less and staff have apparently said that they noticed his high intensity sprints going down. He claims that most African Football Association presidents get paid in prostitutes or have their daughter's studies covered in other countries. That a French international organised a party where he would defecate in a woman's mouth and film himself while doing it, forcing a girl who later on sought to issue a formal complaint to participate. Someone has actually offered Molina a video, which he's declined to see. He claims that Senegal once complained that a player that they played against was over the under-17 age bracket for that game. The African nation that Senegal were playing claimed that that player had actually died uh, after the game, and as a result, they couldn't follow up that query. A said player is still said to be playing, this time for the under-21s. Molina claims that FIFA claims to push for women's football but does very little to protect the girls and women from abuse, that it is rampant everywhere on a global scale. And he actually called out American star Megan Rapino. You only have to scroll down a short way in Molina's Twitter feed to bump into a quote tweet where he has responded to Ferland Mendy's uh, claim that in 2021, uh, you need to start respecting him and I guess other Mendy's, other black people, and stop printing stories where you use Benjamin Mendy's name and you're publishing Edward Mendy's face or Ferlan Mendy's face. He said in 2021 that it's just sort of outrageous that this kind of thing is happening and perhaps that it's not an accident. However, he's basically complaining that his name is being associated with Benjamin Mendy's name. And of course, Benjamin Mendy, his name has been dragged through the mud. He's now been charged with, I guess, six accounts of rape two additional counts added by the crown prosecution service on tuesday so he doesn't want the association there and he's sick of his picture appearing there however remain molina has responded to this by saying totally agree with you it's outrageous much like a guy punching and kicking a girl after showing his cock and this has got an incredible amount of traction online as it would seem that this is one of Molina's strongest claims that Ferland Mendy has been involved in an absolute madness. This all paints a very disturbing picture for the world of football, but there is apparently more to come with Molina saying that in April and March he is going to be publishing more information that will quote unquote blow the football world into pieces and mean that it will no longer be the way it used to be. I think that time has long since gone anyway. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below on all this and more. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel if you're new and drop the video a damn like if you breathe oxygen. For now though, I've been Hugh Izzy and this has been... As you can tell, this is a serious case. There are some incredibly sensational claims that have been made by Romain Molina, the journalist that we've been discussing. And I feel like we should probably go through some of the other ones. Much love to everyone who's tuned in. If you could be uh, kind enough to drop the video a like, it'd be appreciated. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and turn on your bell notification so you don't miss an upload. You never know when they're going to happen. Uh, as you can imagine, social media is now rife with quotations 
from what was an unbelievable uh, Twitter Spaces. Twitter Spaces, if anyone doesn't know, is uh, comparable to, I guess, what Clubhouse, the app was. And it was a pretty much a two-hour space, which, well, there's an hour and a half of it online. You can listen to the whole thing. I don't know what your French is like. Um, but it is available. Um, As I said in the video, there were some huge names in there from Dimitri Payet to Jeremy Doku, the actual Marseille club account, The Rock, um, amongst others, directors of football clubs, directors of rugby clubs, celebrities, lots of blue ticks. And yeah, I feel like we should probably mention a couple of the other things that I didn't touch on in the video. Um, including uh, some more details about uh, specifics. Anyway, as I say, quotations everywhere, including uh, current French internationals having a party where he's decided to defecate in a person's mouth while filming himself. I'm not going to lie, the William Saliba video that came out recently is starting to make a little bit more sense because there are if this guy is to be believed and to be honest he is very trustworthy source who has done some brilliant investigative work before which has exposed you know criminalities abuses going on in the game especially with uh jean bart the uh former haitian president of the fa you know it seems like there is an issue with this in football in general, we obviously know about the cases with uh, Rangers, uh, Celtic, um, Chelsea, Crew Alexander, a lot of names. Uh, you don't have to do much digging, even though it's not going to be shouted out from the rooftops. It is out there. The information is out there. And I think we are bound to see plenty more stories uh, emerging in the coming weeks. Uh, Remain saying 400 plus players currently playing in the Premier League, Championship and League Home have been raped multiple times in their youth, some of whom have contracted anal injuries and or diseases and have had to go to specialised clinics as a result. This is a two decade old issue, the first story of which will come out in December. Um... And, you know, the funny thing about this is the timing cannot be so coincidental. The, the biggest names in the Premier League, boardroom names, have been uh, backing out, jumping ship. Uh, there is, of course, the Ghislaine Maxwell case ongoing. We've just been through the Epstein thing. We know that there is a worldwide, it's a global problem with the elites and paedophilia, uh, sex trafficking. And this type of thing has been going on since the dawn of man, I guess. It is written that it's been going on since Roman times. And youngsters who... are being put in extremely vulnerable situations are being taken advantage of on a regular basis by some of these institutions um, where coaches, staff members, um, adults are abusing their power. And yes, yeah, it is absolutely sickening to even think of, but it's something that I feel really is important to touch upon, if only because this is probably not going to make mainstream media unless you know it's forced um, I don't think it's good for business and as soon as I guess one story comes out you're gonna have to follow up on exactly how we deal with the other um, I'm gonna go through some of the claims that Romain Molina has made uh, one of which we talked about was Megan Rapino. Uh, he did mention the American uh, national 
teams. Uh, she is a star, a celebrity of all, to all accounts, um, in the states, probably worldwide. She is a a voice for equality, diversity, and women's rights. However, she has been accused by a uh, Romain Molino of not being bothered, and this is a quote, not being bothered by Haitian girls getting raped. She prefers earning money over defending these young girls. And this is an incredible, you know, accusation, but he is basically trying to say that she is fully in the knowledge of the situation and isn't speaking out about it. Um, I'm hoping that Megan comes out to defend herself. Otherwise, again, fingers are going to be pointed and it would be a bad look for none of this to be sort of responded to. Um, not a great look, your name being brought up in general. But not the only scandal uh, that Romain was talking about. He actually goes on to talk about a league own team who have covered up a paedophilia scandal in their youth academy by brainwashing the player by the time law enforcement was involved and then sending the young player in question back to his country because he was a foreigner. He has also gone on to say that one of the largest academies in the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo is currently managed by a paedophilia ring, that an international coach was caught red-handed after raping two 13-year-old girls in the middle of a tournament, and his employer, a large media firm, fired him but that the story has been covered up since. I don't know who that is, but it's an international coach that he is naming. Who is an international coach who's been fired by a media outlet? Doing the maths is probably not going to be that difficult for some people who are in the know. And from what I can make out on social media, a lot of people are very surprised that it has taken this long for some of these stories to come to the fore. Edward... Mendy, who was unhappy his photo was being used on Benjamin Mendy news stories, um, was the subject of a case of mistaken identity. I don't know whether we can call it that because, you know, these things have to go through four or five editors before it gets published. Perhaps not for the internet, but in terms of going on the news and to print, it would have to go through plenty of people. But... Uh, Furland and Edward Mendy hitting out at incorrect use of their photos in articles about Benjamin Mendy. And obviously no one wants to get mistaken for Benjamin Mendy right now because he's banged up for stuff that is sounding so questionable. You know, he may well be cancelled for life. Um, it has become clear over the last couple of days that he has been charged with another two counts of rape, which would make it six altogether. Now, Romain Molina, uh, on his Twitter, has actually <sighs> responded to Fernand Mendy, which, you know, he is really not holding back. Thank you to anyone who is sending me links so that we can go through these. Uh, I will go through that whole list in a second. Um, if I actually just go over here, though, to uh, Romain Molina's Twitter and scroll down, we can see that he is not hiding. This is not um, to be taken lightly, guys. I have to stress to you that this is a seriously well-respected journalist who's done some brilliant work that has uncovered the darkest secrets in football across the world for many a year now. He's published six books and people listen when he speaks. And the fact that he has gone on record, especially on Twitter, um, responding to Furla Mendy, who, as I say, was unhappy with the fact that his picture was being used in Benjamin Mendy articles, rightly so, but he has been responded to by Romain saying, totally agree with you, it's outrageous, much like a guy punching and kicking a girl after showing her his cock. And that is what he has been accused of. He does actually go on to clarify, Romain, that, you know, it is a real scandal that this mistaken identity, as they call it, thing keeps happening. 
It is a shame to take the wrong photo on the pretext that players have the same name or skin colour, for example. But that it's a bit rich coming from you when reportedly this is what you've been up to. Let's go through a tweet which I guess encapsulates everything from... Who has just sent me this? AG1610, thanks for sending me this. He says... I'll switch over here. Bring that up for you. Mega thread. Everything you need to know. Eli Wahi, Montpellier striker. He's only 18 years old, but in 2018, he was fired from SM Can's youth setup. Apparently, the excuse that they've given isn't quite the truth. And the truth sounds quite shocking. Um, bringing over some secondary school friends in the washrooms to undress and in front of him. Is this what the Dons are doing? This is what I mean about Saliba's video. Does that make it make more sense now? A league and team covering up paedophilia scandal in their youth academy. PSG have been conceding burnout after burnout. Over 100 employees have left in the last year alone. Leonardo is hated because of his attitude. I think this is the funny thing about this. Some of these claims are really outlandish and it's almost like, wow, is that true? Can that possibly be true? Some of them are very believable. And I guess that makes the outlandish ones seem like they could be true. People, I think know around the world not only in paris that leonardo is not the most popular character at the club uh, most african presidents get paid in prostitutes or have their daughter's studies covered in other countries i mean what is actually going on out here uh, arsenal of course brought up into the conversation as was discussed earlier uh, arsenal all the players Inhale nitrous oxide, uh, said Molina. I guess this is old news. A lot of this is old news. Um, a player came back to celebrate his birthday in Paris under the theme nitrous oxide balloons. Is that going to be Gwen Doozy? Obviously, we remember that nightclub scene. Um, I'm hoping that all that's gone from Arsenal now and that, you know, players are sort of watching their behaviour a little bit more, but that was a thing. Um, he also says this, the massive media outrage surrounding the Qatar World Cup is political and financed by people and organisations who wish harm upon the country. And I'll be honest, reading between the lines is what I do for a living. And this made me think, hang on a second, this is a bit questionable, isn't it? Because a lot of fingers have been pointed at Qatar and its hosting of the World Cup, its human rights violations, its potential slave labour, etc., keeping workers trapped and taking their passports, you know, living conditions and whatnot. Is that a real problem? I guess, not even a question, it is a real problem, but is the fact that that is being given so much air in mainstream media in the West part of a an attempt to sort of hijack or mar the Qatar World Cup, much in the same way as they did with Russia. Um, not to say that there aren't questionable things happening in Russia, but it's a little bit like if you didn't win the bid, you have a bitter taste in your mouth, and there is a sort of propaganda PR machine spin thing that goes on where people's minds are tainted and we try and stop that being such a success. I don't know. It made me think anyway, perhaps those are the people behind this leak. The massive media outrage surrounding the Qatar World Cup is entirely political and financed by people and organisations who wish harm upon the country. Next one. 80% of players smoke shisha. i got to say, this one surprised me. Um, 80% of players smoke shisha. I guess this is about PSG in particular. At one point in time, he says, PSG players were even bringing their shishas 
with them on away games. Uh, Blaise Matuidi regularly smoked shisha, smoked shisha, uh, but things still worked out for him. What he also said in the Twitter spaces was that Pavard had been smoking as well and that ultimately the Bayern coaches had started to pick up on the fact that his intense sprints or the number of intense sprints had really gone down since he'd been smoking heavily. Um, Molina also claiming that most leagues in Southeast Asia, Eastern Europe and Latin American countries are fixed. He said that Ireland, Malta and Gibraltar also have lots of match fixing and that a former French international was involved in a go fast which is a smuggling drugs and or other products into another country. International player for France involved in smuggling drugs into another country. His club's president saved his arse. Who could that be? I mean, I don't want to just fling names out there, but the first name that comes into mind is Benzema. He's been involved in some madness, and I think Macron has been instrumental in allowing him to come back into the national side because reportedly Didier Deschamps didn't want him there. Anyway, revelation after revelation. It doesn't stop. There's more to go through. Amiens. Let's talk about these Ligue 1 uh, side, who he claims is an absolute circus. On the way back from their away games at Ajaccio, everyone smelled like alcohol. The players love booze, shisha and drunken nights out. Players are being a minor. That's not even a player. A minor was raped and forced into an abortion at an international centre of FIFA. Okay, this is part of the Haitian expose that uh, Romain Moline has already done, where Yves Jean Bart has been completely exposed um, in a situation whereby money was being donated to Haiti um, from around the world, including places like South Korea, FIFA, um, they're donating to try and help the situation. What this guy had done, uh, Jean Bart, I'll just bring a picture of him up, is uh, create a footballing centre of excellence for youngsters that were uh, trying to make their way and abusing his power. Um, in ways that have been described such as this. Um, it could be teenage girls who are, you know, trying their utmost to make something of their lives to better their life for them and their families, and football is the only way. They're given this incredible opportunity to go to this home of football in Haiti, and one of the staff members approaches a girl who this guy, Jean Bart, likes the look of. Those staff members' jobs were to make it clear to the girls, the players, that their time at this centre of excellence was potentially under threat and the only way that they could fix their situation was to go and speak individually, one-on-one, -on -one, to Jean Bart. They'd obviously be devastated, upset, in tears, and they would do anything to make sure that they weren't turfed out. And as a result of years of this happening, uh, the shocking scale of sexual abuse allegations at this National Football Centre in Haiti were exposed um, and really are the main reason why Yves Jean Bart has been banned from football for life. 34 alleged victims at the centre not only by Jean Bart, but by also 10 other potential perpetrators. And let me uh, free the realness here for a second, lads. Um, if you think, and if you're delusional enough to bury your head in the sand and think that this is something that goes on in these far corners of the world and nowhere else, then you are kidding yourself. This is happening locally. It's happened down the road. Um, as I say, it's happened in Sc Scotland with Celtic. It has happened with Crew Alexander. It's happening up and down the country, probably as we speak. And there are definitely people involved in the game of football who are guilty of the ultimate sins. And 
were it not for journalists like Ed Arams, Alex Sismic, and especially Romain Molina, these type of things might not actually be being talked about. It is important that, especially when football is so crucial to everybody, you know, whether it's in terms of it being a vice, a distraction, or your actual life, that these things are highlighted and that the people that we hold in such high regard are held to a high standard. Shit like this, I can't even think about watching football knowing that this type of thing is going on. Whether it is backhanders and corruption, whether it is abuse, negligence, there's a plethora of reasons why what we're seeing is the shop window done up all nicely and what is going on backroom is potentially devastating and hopefully those at fault are dealt with. Um, anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Please do subscribe to the channel if you're new. I hope you've maybe not enjoyed the video but found it eye-opening. I know that it's quite early to be going through some stuff as dramatic as this but honestly, um, last night was an historic night on Twitter. Twitter Spaces is a great platform that has given um, us another way of sharing information and joining together and when I see people who are truth seekers and are putting themselves at risk to give us the information that is out there or that is being hidden from us uh, it is inspiring and extremely necessary that we're all aware of this and that we kind of stamp it out as and when we see it so yeah there's your video um, for anyone that's been wondering, this is live. Okay, we are live. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, let's just say hello to a couple. Uh, Miko Dillon, uh, Shahi Ahmed, how are you doing? The editor, yes, this is live. Stop saying it isn't live, it's live. Um, Based Saz says, yes, this is indeed the world that we live in. Himni Kadoza saying, I love you, chat. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones. We, are, we really are all we've got. Indeed, people. Turbulent times and whatnot, look after each other. Uh, I will see you in the next one. I'm going to love you and leave you for now. Please do smash the hell out of the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and turn those bell notifications on so you never miss an upload. For now, though, I've been here with you, and this has been fucking outrageous. Peace. <laughs>